I'm just fascinated by science and technology. And the stories that I'm interested in telling are very much inspired by science and scientists. And then finding the emotional, profound thing that one stumbles upon in life and how that connects to a certain scientific paradigm. One of the things that really struck me about him was the fact that he was interested in science, but he was interested also in the human condition, in human nature. I think Mike, as a filmmaker, has a really unique ability to capture the sort of ineffable and the, the metaphysical. Scientists are my greatest role models. I think what they're doing is really important. My family's comprised of scientists, and I admire all of them. And I read a lot about science, and so Another Earth was very much inspired by string theory, which is sort of cutting-edge theoretical physics, it proposes the idea of a multiverse, the possibility of another you existing. And Eye Origins was inspired by iris biometrics, the uniqueness of the eye. The thing that I love about the eyes is it's sort of a meeting place between beautiful aestheticism and the, the science and the, the, the biometric science and specificity of the eye. Everybody's eyes are unique. There's seven billion people on this planet and every single person has their own unique pair of eyes. There's a database of eyes that exist. In India, every single citizen of India is having their eyes scanned. The big premise is that there are duplicate eyes. There's so many challenges with like realizing this on film. In the script, the character of Sophie was written to have this wonderful quality called sectoral heterochromia. What that means is more than one color per eye. When I was writing it, I was like, well, we're going to have to do this as a visual effect throughout the entire movie. I had no idea how we were going to do this. But lo and behold, Astrid, before blowing me away, was being able to embody this character. She blew me away with the fact that she has these eyes. But we needed her eyes to be in Salamina's face. Eyes in visual effects um, are the hardest thing to do realistically. And so our sort of workaround was we weren't going to digitally create eyeballs in her. We were going to take Astrid's eyes, literally cut them out and motion track them onto sweet little Kashish's face, into her eyes. When Mike brought it, to us, it, it seems very ambitious. I actually wasn't sure myself whether it would work. We had, I don't know, roughly 120 um, eyeball shots that needed to be inserted. We can sort of see that we're kind of grabbing a whole range of points across the face. And then when the whole thing is color graded together, then we really bring out the specific patterning and the exposure. So in this scene, it's quite a complicated eyeball motion. There's lots of different motions that are working with and against each other. And then also on top of that, we have his hand passes in front of her face repeatedly. So there's an added component of having to rotoscope the, the actual hand and, and add it back on top of the eyeballs. You, you're going for what's going to feel real, not for what is real. What is real is kind of irrelevant. It's all about the experience of the audience. It's exactly the way I think visual effects should always be. You don't know that, that, that that's a, an effect, effect, that it's a visual effect. We did that for every single shot that she's in. To the point where when I watch the movie, I think those are her real eyes. It's really time consuming. But that way we preserve that organic quality and texture and the thing that makes us real and human. There's a point in this movie when every, you know, every time I've been at the screening, half of the audience starts, literally starts to cry. I think that everyone in this world has looked into someone's eyes and had a feeling of nostalgia or deja vu. And so that's a really broad uh, idea. And he pinpoints that, that idea and then, you know, it, it, Became, and then gives you a possible explanation. Yeah, and then and then yeah, and then works it in. You always feel that we're groping around in the dark for some sort of proof that the world does feel like it's magic sometimes. That sometimes you meet a person and you look in their eyes and you're certain you've known them before under different circumstances. And the idea that this film might be offering some of that, it's like the audience wants to surrender, and Mike is just particularly good at like giving them permission to surrender. As a director, you are 
constructing a thing that is a transmitter of emotion. Your job is to try and make sure everything that's happening is in service of that. The works that I admire most are the ones that are conveying something real subtle, or real nuanced or rare, and it gives it to you like a gift.